Hello people, this is our Cobra, this is Let's Play The Tiles Principle Blind, where today we will ta tackle the fifth room. That means there's only two left in here, doesn't it? Yeah. Is it eight? There's usually eight, isn't there? Seven? Maybe it's seven. Yeah, it's seven. So we're getting close. Wait, you'd think the fire would be over there, but what? Oh right, that's where I got that from. Yeah, okay. Anyway, let's go in here. Three freaking stars! Holy shit! That's something. That's something. Also, I think I forgot to note last time, because, because I was kind of so, um, concerned with the um, conversation at the time, but kind of, the game can be a shadow to the fact that, you know, you all have limited ways to respond. And so that, that's kind of semi-intentional, so I like that. Party on, dudes! <clears throat> Yo, if... I don't know if you folks noticed, but it's the end of the world. There's nothing you can do about it, so instead of sitting around crying, how about we have some fun before we broke? Yes, you know exactly what- The ages have passed since the first words were spoken in the darkness. Initiate program. Generations of your kind have come and gone since those words. And that's how I prefer The garden it. has changed many times. But I remember. I remain. Only within me can you find immortality. So you say. So you say. Yes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's play some video games. It's a land party time. Two days from now, we all get together in the old school library. There'll be norms, drinks, music, your old school gaming. You're invited and bring your friends too, especially if they're in heart. See you in 3000 BC. Look, look. Well, I suppose that's one way to deal with it. Progress report 32. We got into that irritating point where all the major stuff is in place and all we have to deal with are a million little things. The main model is all functioning and interacting with each other correctly. The process is happening more or less as planned. This could actually work. But it's still crude as hell. Some of it's just server stuff like the random use of names. Some of it's more worrying various bugs the fact we haven't run more stairs to test. We've got a lot of policy to do. With the team down to half the original size, I'm not, I'm not sure we can actually finish everything that needs to be done. So what I'd really like to discuss tomorrow morning is a new set of priorities. Please put some thought into what you think must be fitted or cost. Nadia. P.S. Alexander, get some sleep. I know you're still working. This is your baby. We're going to need your input tomorrow. Philosophy of Teeth. Last night, I had a simple but brilliant idea. Everyone who would like to write about philosophy or spirituality, especially to make some kind of grand statement about the nature of the body and the soul, your first experience a really bad tooth infection. I don't just mean a slight toothache, I mean the kind of hardcore infection that happened when several incompetent dentists missed a cavity in one of your back teeth and the thing keeps crawling growing into the nerve itself is really badly infected. I mean, the pain is unimaginable. It comes in waves and these waves turn out everything else when you about you. You can't talk, you can't move, you can't think. There's just pain and absolutely nothing else. It's like a brain just gets hijacked mind. And then you go to the dentist and assuming you can get a decent one, they stick some chemicals in you which makes you go dumb. Then drill a hole and you cut the nerve, snip snip, and it's all over. Just like that, like repairing a car or a watch. Your whole existence was crippled by this tiny, tiny nerve sending electrochemical sickness into your brain. And this unimaginable pain with nearly blood out of your very conscious can be stopped just by a little cut. You should call this the toothless principle. But that's incredibly stupid. <laughs> True, that is an interesting thing to think about. Got nothing to add to accept that. Anyway, let's get the one over here. Scale of it all overwhelms me. This is what I tell myself. We can calculate the age of the Earth, the size of the universe, the future of the stars. Sure, we are minuscule, momentary flashes of thought on a grain of sand drifting through the cosmos. But our minds can recreate the past and predict the future. On, say, Friday, a million years from now, we'll all be dead. But right now, we know what the night sky will look like on that day. And so, in a way, we're not entirely bound by time. Knowledge is a, a kind of freedom. 
that's a beautiful thought. I mean, let's read those two messages I found and see what they have. I keep trying to imagine that all of this is designed for some purpose. Not just for challenges, but Elohim, the terminals, the glitches and all. The puzzle isn't before eyes, it's behind them. An interesting observation. Please don't lag. Wait, that's that one. Oh, what's the second one? Was that was over here? Yeah, I think it was over here. Yeah. I'm just going to rest here for a while. I need a moment of peace. Destiny can wait. <laughs> That's one way to look at it. Let's see, there's a second computer here, so let's see what that wants to add. Transcendence. I am perfectly... Re read a response to last week's article on science and atheism. I am perfectly aware of all the argument against religion. In fact, I agree with most of them. There is no question that there is an object to mature reality. I'm also absolutely convinced that only a secular society can be truly equal and just. Yet, I believe as I am, as they say, a person of faith. Religion to me is not about distorting observable reality with superstitions, but about transcendence. It isn't about deluding ourselves that the earth is 6,000 years old, or God will help us if we save the right words inside our heads, but about reaching out to the sublime. This is not a rejection of reason, but its application to a set of experiences that cannot be approached by more traditional means. True engagement with religion is humbling. It transcends culture, nationality, and agenda. As such, I think it goes hand in hand with science, and it's not opposed to it. Dr. Omar Garib, Institute for Applied Mathematics. Kind of a beautiful thought. Wish more people shared it. Probably change the world. True, there are certain idealistic, idealist books, not of a clerical character, but philosophical ones, where you can read that time and space are categories of our minds and resolve from the requirements of our thinking, and that nothing actually corresponds to them in reality. But it is difficult to agree with this view. If any idealist philosopher, instead of arriving in time to catch the 9pm train, should turn up two minutes late, he would see the tail of the departing train and would be convinced by his own eyes that time and space are inseparable from material reality. The task is to diminish this space, to accommodate, to economize, economize time, to prolong human life, to register pastime, to raise life to a higher level and enrich it. This is the reason for the struggle with space and time, at the basis of which lies the struggle to subject matter to man. Matter would constitute the foundation not only of everything that really exists, but also of all imagination. Indeed. And I hope that's a struggle we'll one day win. And then use for the better, mind you. Build a Universe. In his remarkable 1978 essay, How to Build a Universe That Doesn't Fall Apart Two Days Later, Philip K. Dick discussed the two things that are most central to his work. What is reality and what is an authentic human being? His speculations and experiences would seem extraordinary to a reader unfamiliar with his work. This problem seems like a far-fetched idea. Somehow the world of the Bible is a literally real but vague landscape, never changing, hidden from our sight, but available to us by revelation and the notion that perhaps we all exist in the year 50 AD. Dick actually did was one of the simplest, most elegant, and most useful definitions of reality ever formulated. Reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. That's a useful one. Materialist philosophers have expressed similar ideas before, in Straton of Stagyrus Talus Principle, but it's particularly interesting to see such a thought expressed by a decidedly more mystical writer. Hmm. Point. Now let's decide which door to take. Which challenge to subject yourself to. I suppose but really I should just start with the one to the right here. Time crawls. Oh, that sounds delightful. Maybe switching them around? Hmm. 
Let's try going in here and seeing what's going on. I'm recording this. Well, because I think I kind of have to. Let's try to view this with unclouded eyes. to do right I think I have an idea Juggling here. Trying to climb this on my head, it's kind of right. So, those two things I kind of like have four objects available, but I need three to keep these up, and then I need two to have this angle. I need at least two light blocks to get over. This one's... Ugh. Maybe there's another angle I'm not considering.
seem like it. Okay, this one I'm really unsure about. You think... You think it would have to be over there, right from here. But um, if we actually stand over here... So we can see it. Like over here in the corner. Then it's actually kind of limited where I can have one over here. But it's a bit more thing. Yeah. Unless I have overlooked the tool somewhere, that's also a possibility. Me. I need to consider the juggling and such, maybe do a couple experiments. Ugh. I'm just gonna cut here because this one I can already feel is gonna take time. <laughs> 